Well, hello there, people inside of the Viewerverse. Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the Viewerverse, I'm going to be hitting up No Man's Sky. Now, this is 2023, and I haven't done a best start guide for ages. And we've had loads of different updates, and there's loads of different platforms now on board, ready to play No Man's Sky. What are my top tips? How can you dive straight into No Man's Sky and start catching up with the rest of the players that have had this game for freaking years? You're in the right place if that's the sort of thing you're after. Right, let's jump on over into game. So here I am on PlayStation 5, but you can do this on all platforms, so it doesn't really actually matter which one you're using. I'm just going to hit on up No Man's Sky and we're going to get loaded on in. Heck yes, we are. So boom. Cool, yeah. So you're going to have to go through all these different title screens. Now the reason why I'm showing you all this sort of title screen sort of shenanigans, I mean, yeah, I could cut all this out, but I want to make it quite clear to you which game mode to select when you start playing No Man's Sky. So go into No Man's Sky, you can see here I've got lots of saves already. So this one is like well over 100, well, that's a big number. <laughs> I've plowed a lot of hours into this game. Anyway, just go on down and hit New Game. Hit New Game, boom. And what you want to do is select creative mode. I know, I know that you're probably thinking, well, I want to play normal or I want to play relaxed. Don't you worry about that, people, because you can change your game mode whenever you want. The reason why I'm saying to fire up inside of creative mode is because when you do, it starts you by your ship. So you don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to repair it. You don't have to do all that sort of shenanigans or the tutorial that you're going to skip but i'm going to tell you what you need to know i'm going to tell you the basics of what you need to know inside of this video and the things that you're skipping but in favor of skipping these little sort of tutorial steps you're going to get all base parts now to get all base parts normally inside of this game you have to dig up the whole freaking planet to get that the salvage data that you can exchange for the base parts and that's going to take you swathes of time probably time you don't got yeah, so anyway, so here's my ship. My ship is lovely and fixed, and if I wanted to, I could take off if I really wanted to, but no. Head on over to this sort of thing over here. This is a base computer. Now all you need to do is just hit this and hit claim base. It doesn't really matter what sort of planet this is or anything like that. You're inside of creative mode so you don't have to worry at the moment about your life support or your hazard protection. But I'm going to be telling you how you can top those up in a bit and all the things that you missed inside the tutorial steps by doing it this way. Now the reason why I've suggested you do it this way is when you go into your base, base sort of menu and that's just by pressing up on side of the d-pad here to get into your base parts to actually build you've got all these base structures already unlocked these would have cost you a shed load of navigational data or not navigational data salvage data up inside of the actual nexus to unlock all this stuff but you've got it all you've got it all for free and what else have you got? You've got yourself all of the glyphs. Heck yes. So your glyphs, I think you're going to find these under there and under the atlas and portal glyphs. They allow you to jump anywhere in the universe. You've got them all. Now that would normally take you freaking ages to get all of these glyphs. So you've got a massive great big head start inside of the verse. So now that you've claimed this base you can actually start building out a base and i suggest that you build yourself like a little mini town now i tend to use this sort of prefab menu quite a lot until i get used to the base building mechanics so i want to stick down this boom now you can see there it's got like a little electricity sign on it or did have so if i go down here i need to give it electricity but first i need to give it a door so i can go inside the dang thing so i'm just going to chuck a door on the front of here now you can change the color of all of this by pressing this sort of like trackpad if you want and you can make yourself a nice little colorful town but because this is a tutorial i'm just going to be going in and showing you what you get so this is like a little prefab room and look, it's even put some glass windows in. I don't remember it doing that before when I used to play back in the day. Okay, brilliant. Well, okay, lovely. We've got to sell some freaking windows, mate. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, right. So what you want to do is go into this menu here and scroll on down and you should find these sort of tech desks to put in. So you've got these ones here. So you've got that one, which is like um, the overseer's terminal. You've got this one, which is like an exocraft terminal, weapons terminal, an agricultural terminal, a science terminal. And you want to try and make a room for each of these different sort of labs, if you like. And you can see here, it's got auto snap points. So I could snap it there, or I could put it there if I wanted. I'm just gonna put it in front of this window, right there, I think, people. Kaboom. So I'm going to have that there. Now, you know that it had the power markings? Well, underneath this one, that looks like a solar panel. 
you can put in power. So I'm just going to snap these into the corners. And the reason I didn't put the desk in the corner is because I just want to snap these into the corners. So that's going to give me all the power I need. You can put a battery in as well for any surplus electricity. I put two of them there. And I put another couple of. I put one. Actually, I'm going to put a biofuel reactor. The reason I'm putting biofuel reactors is at night time, solar panels don't freaking work. Okay? So I've got that in there. Now, this isn't going to do anything until you actually recruit somebody. But don't worry, you're going to get your recruits as you're going through the actual story. Because you can still do the story. Don't you worry. This hasn't negated any of the story for you doing it this way. It's just removed a couple of the simplest of tutorial steps. Now, what I like to also do on each of these is go into my prefabs again and just choose this little glass dome thing here. Now, I'm just stick that on the roof like that. Boom. You're probably thinking, well, how do I get up there? Well, inside of this menu, you should have this little ladder. And all you want to do is snap that into the middle of the room, like so. There we go. We got ourselves a nice little ladder, and we can climb said ladder. And then up here, you can plant in some plants. So if you go into this menu here and scroll on up into this bit, you've got all these sorts of plants here. So maybe just put two of each in here, like boom, boom. And I think you can just press L2. And it should move you on to the next one. Yeah, there you go. Frost crystal. Put in frost crystal. Press L2. And put in the next one, which is this one. Boom. And boom. That one. Two of them. Lovely jubbly. Two of those. Now, a lot of these plants you can use for recipes later on inside of game. Or you can sell them once you've harvested them and make yourself some units. So it's just a nice little thing to have. Also, there are going to be mission quests later on that ask you to actually harvest said plants. And you're going to need those for those. Cool. Right, so we've got that all going. We've got all that in there. Lovely. Well, that's now got power. And that's my first little room. Now, if you wanted, you could slap some decals on this or whatever. I mean, you've got these stickers over here. So if you really wanted to tart this up, you could. You know, it's going to be my overseer, which I think is normally like a little geck guy. I'm going to stick that on there. You know, boom, there you go. There you are. So that's my first little house inside of my little town. Now I kind of want to do the same thing again. So I'm just going into here. And you're going to build out each of them for each of those different tech desks that I showed you earlier on. So yeah, that's, um, and then after you've built out all of those, what I would suggest you have is one extra building for your own sort of technologize. So I'm probably going to stick this one over the top of that base computer. I'm going to hide the base computer inside my base. Boom, like that. And then I'm just going to stick a door on the front of this one. This is going to be the technology room that I'm building here. So I'm probably not going to put a biodome on the top of this one. Instead, on this one, I'm going to have a teleporter in here because I want to have my own teleporter so I can teleport to places inside of the verse. Thank you, I do. And teleporter. Boom. Put that there. Lovely jubbly. And what I also want is a, a galactic trade terminal. Now, galactic trade terminals let you sell things inside of the verse. So I'm going to stick that there. You can see there that it, it's kind of in front of a window if I stick it there, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, there we are. We're, we're probably going to stick it there then. That's um, a bit random. But they never used to put the windows in. Yeah, that's, that's very odd. Um, yeah, that just now floats in midair. Very strange, but now you can sell stuff there, which is cool, which is nice, like that. And we've got our little base computer there. I'm going to probably still stick in some of the solar panels. So there we go, let's put in a couple of solar dishes. Doom, and boom. And there, and there. Lovely jubbly. And I'm probably going to put in one of these little biofuel reactors as well. Done. I'll put in two of those. And I'll probably put in a battery and one more solar cell. There we go. Lovely jubbly. So we've got all that in there. That, that works quite nicely. Now what you probably also want to have here is um, some exocrafts. So the exocrafts, you're going to find those as well, I believe, in this menu. Are you in this menu? No, you're not. Where are the exocrafts? Are they in here? They're in here. They're in this end one here, portable stuff. Now, Exocrafts let you traverse the actual landscape. But you're going to want to put down all of these if you can. So I'm going to put down this sort of thing. I might even put this on the roof of my actual little house. So, yeah, why not fudge not? I'll stick that on top of the roof of this. Boom. There we are. So I know which one it is from a freaking mile off. And then I want to stick in a couple of Exocrafts around here too. So i would have that one there. Thank you very much. Cool. And I'm probably going to have the Exomech. Lovely jubbly. 
I might as well stick this one right over here. Have that there. Boom. And then I like... Well, it's, it's probably a good idea to have all of these out. Because, again, you're going to get given missions at some stage where you're going to have to use said exocrafts to actually go places and do things. So I'm just going to stick all these ones in a row over here. The ones that I don't use as much as the others. Now, the only one I can't put down right now is because we're not in water is the Nautilin. But I, I wouldn't worry about that one too much. You will get missions for it, but you can always put it down at a later date. There we go. I've got all my exocrafts there. Lovely jubbly. And, uh, yeah. So now I just need to build out all the other buildings for all the other different technology guys. And I'll be right back with you after I've put down all of those. But they're pretty much a replica of this one that I built first. And uh, I'm just going to have a few of those. And in the end, it's going to look like a nice little swanky town. So I'll be right back with you once I've built the little swanky town. Oh, one more thing before I do that, before I cut away. Is if you go into here and you pick up an appearance modifier. If you chuck this down, I'm going to put it near to my technology place. If you don't like the look of your player and the, the way they look, you can go over to this thing. Interact with it. And you can change all your look and feel. You know, there's a load of presets, but you can go into individual areas and change it all up however you want. Pretty darn freaking epic, huh? Okay, there is one inside these presets that looks like a stormtrooper. Or well, there used to be. Let's see if he's still there. There he is. I'll just go with that one for now. There we go. Boom. Sweet. So there we go. So you can change your look and feel, people. Anyway, I'll be right back with you. And I'll show you the rest of my little town after I've made it. And then we'll take it from there, people. Okay, people, well, I'm back. And something else I'm going to add in to this one that's got my agricultural station in is a nutrient processor, which I got from the portable tech area. So that was inside of here. There's that one there, which lets you sort of change things into food items. Now, there are other types of refiners that allow you to transmute other things into other things, which you might want to put down a large refiner. There's all these storage containers as well, which I would strongly suggest that you put those down to give you extra storage capacity somewhere on site of your base as well. Now I haven't put plants in all the tops of the biodomes as yet but I probably will do that too but there we go. You've got your own little mini town. Now something you might want for your mini town is a landing pad as well. So I'm just going to move my ship out of the way. Now to move my ship out of the way I'm just going to press it down on the actual d-pad. That brings up the quick menu. I'm going to go over to this teleportery thing look, looking thing there and I'm just going to stick my ship over out the way. Boom stick that there and then right in the middle of my town I want to have a landing pad so I think landing pads are under what well, they're under one of these freaking menus which one is it is under here is it inside of here landing pad landing pads where are you there they are I'm just gonna go for I'll go for this one with the spotlights on maybe okay now I've gone into build camera mode which I did by pressing in one of the L sticks However, it, you see there, it's trying to lock on to one of my prefabbed buildings. And I don't really want it on one of my prefab buildings. So you can actually put in a three placement mode, which is just down. And hopefully, I'm going to get a green state right in the middle of all of this. There we go. Now, actually, that probably takes up too much room. So I'm probably going to go for the alternative one. There we go. We'll go for this one. This is a lot smaller, a lot more compact. And I think it fits my base a little bit better. So I'm going to slap that there. So now I can land wherever I want. Now all of these bases at the moment are kind of like separated. But if I go into, I believe into here, I can pick up one of those. Actually, any, just pick up anything. If you press triangle, that takes you into the wire mode. And you see these like little things on the end, these terminals. If you just connect these bases together like that, with these sort of like little wiry nodes, boom, from there and put it over to there, that, that just means that they're all going to share a power supply. Just don't put it on the doors. Don't put it on these ones or else it might lock the doors. Just do it on these side pidgets to the buildings and just sort of connect them all together. I'm inside of that one. No, I can't be inside. There we go. Boom. And hopefully they're all going to share power. So all the batteries that you've been putting inside of these Hopefully you're going to get fully charged. You know those biofuel reactors that I said you might need at night time? You might not need them because you've got quite a lot of batteries taking on all of that solar cell. Now you don't have to complete the circuit. I just tend to do that anyway just in case I missed one. There we go. I'm just going to make sure I've definitely got that one connected. There you go. They're all connected together now, people. So I've got myself a nice little ring of houses. And each of them have got different tech desks in. 
Hopefully you're going to have all the plants inside of all these biodomes now all planted out. And they're going to take a little while to grow. They grow ambiently on the side, peeps. So, yeah, I haven't put in all the plants up here. So I'm just going to chuck in some plants up here. But I think you get the rough idea because you saw me doing this earlier. And then there's one other structure that I'm going to build just to have all of those storage containers, which I'll show you in a moment. Anyhow, let's uh, go into here. Let's um, get all those plants in, in into here. Where were those plants? Were they under there? I think they were yes they are okay so what did i get to i think the last plant i put in was probably the cactuses i put in a few more cactuses anyway just to be sure and then there we go cactus cactus l2 and two star brambles two of these guys lovely jubbly and two nip nips and i think that's pretty much all of them isn't it it is then there's a planter rack so i'm just going to go to the start of the plants again i'm going to put down two fungal plants um boom whoops i pressed the wrong button doesn't overly matter but you get the idea you're going to fill out all these biodomes with all your plants lovely jubbly and um yeah now the next building so the last building that i want to build is i just want to build an area with using all of those sort of um storage rooms so all i'm going to do is i'm going to go into there and you see this one here cuboid room use that one don't use the solid cube because that can go horribly wrong but yeah <laughs> it's just a solid block you can't go inside of it I and mean, all i'm going to do is over where i've got all my exo crafts at the moment you know i've got I've got that over there i'm just going to build this behind my tech place but you know you build it wherever you want to build it i'm going to build it here so this is nice a nice bit of flat land is basically what i'm doing i'm going to just put it there and over here in a row one two three four and five that should do the trick and then all i want to do is then go and find those little rooms that we saw earlier where are you storage rooms there you are so it's zero through to nine and i'm just going to put one and you want to make it so you see that washing machine -y type thing you want to make that face inwards like that and boom and i'm just pressing l2 to go to the next one it's going to look like a freaking laundrette in there when we're done, people. And um, over on this side, I want to do the same thing again. But I want to make sure that the, the, the sort of washing machine face is facing inside again, like that, you know? Now, you can make these different colours depending on what you want to put in there. But, you know, I'm not really too fast. I'm just going to stick them in however for now, people. Put that one there. Put that one there. Did that just rotate itself? It can be a little bit tricky to see where that washing machine face is. There you go. And, uh, and I think that's all of them. I think that's all of them. Yes, that's all of them. Done! And that's all of them in. So now all, all I need is a doorway to get into there. So I'm just going to go grab a door, which is on the prefab area. Door, 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 door. There you go. Chicka pow. And then I'm probably going to need to put a, a, a bit of a power cable over to all of this stuff. So there you go. We'll go into my build room and pick up any old part, anything. And uh, there we are. I've gone into the, the, the wire mode by pressing triangle on it. I'm just going to connect that onto the back end of there. Pow. Like so. Now you could put solar panels all the way across the top of the roof of this thing if you like, people in the view of us. But here you go. Now you've got all this additional storage space. So that should set you up. That's pretty much everything's a given winner winner chicken dinner but you're probably going to want yourself some sort of units some sort of cash base so if you go inside of your actual crafting menu and you go into your cargo slot if you press x on a free space here you're looking for something that's super expensive like status devices and if you just keep pressing r1 on there you can see there it's built it's putting up loads and loads it will tell you what to use rather than r1 depending on your platform just where it says build you see that number going up 54 55 it tells me what buttons to do down there so i'm just going to make myself maybe a hundred of these okay so there we go 100 of them that'll do the trick boom got a shed load of those now i might want to put those into my storage capacity so there you go i can just chuck them over into my storage right now and i'm doing that just by pressing triangle and then just dragging them and dropping them into my storage area so I can fill up my storage with a shed load of this. If you, anything else looks looks like you want to have a quick head start, I mean, I've just got all these just for, um, you know, for units. You know, I've got that Galactic Trade Terminal inside of my little technology room, which is just here. If I go into here, I can sell those remaining ones that I've got on my person right now in this Galactic Trade Terminal. There we go. And if I go to sell, I've got all these. If I sell them right now, that's going to give me 300,000 
units, which is enough to buy myself a semi-decent spaceship. So boom, done that. Now you buy spaceships up at the space station, but we've already got a spaceship anyway. We've got our spaceship over there. Now, what things did you miss out on by doing this, by building your town first? Oh, and one more thing about um, building your town first and all that sort of shenanigans is you need to upload your base. So if I go into, which room was it that had the base computer in? I think it was my technology one, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So if I go over to this and hit on up that, I can name my base, take a photo of my base and all that sort of shenanigans. But I just want to hit upload base. There we go. That's my base done. Now, if you want to save your game, you're probably best to jump in your ship and out of your ship to make a save. And I'm going to tell you all the things that you need to know now that you skipped inside of the tutorial. Okay, right, so you have two bars. You have two bars. One is your hazard protection, one is your um, life support. Now, to top those up, you're going to be needing uh, either the yellow plants or the oxygen plants. So the yellow plants, you can see there's some up on that hill there. You see that sort of like orangey glow right over there? That's one of the actual plants that you need. Now, if I scan by pressing in L1, that's going to bring up these plants. And you can see there, there's also a red plant. That's oxygen. Oxygen's going to top up your life support, whereas the orange plants are going to top up your hazard protection. So you're going to need those sort of things on the side of planets. So here we go. Let's pick up one of these. Sodium-rich plant. Boom. So that one's for hazard protection. This one over here is going to be for your life support bar. Now at the moment you can't see those bars because I'm still in the side of creative mode. So if I pick up both of those, lovely jubbly. Now to change it into normal mode, all you need to do is press and go into your options. And where it says difficulty, change that from creative. And you can choose whichever mode you want. Relax mode is the mode I like to play in. I like to play relax mode now. But normal, there's survival mode as well. I wouldn't go for that until you're actually, you know, au fait with everything. And normal mode. Boom, there we go. And I'm gonna apply the um, difficulty settings. Boom, I'm now in normal mode. So you can see here, you see that green bar next to my player? That's the hazard protection. The other bar underneath it is your life support. Now to top up your hazard protection, there's ways and means that you can do that. You can use that sodium plant, that orange plant that I just picked up. Oh, and you see these hazard plants here, these horrible plants. If you kill them, they're gonna give you oxygen. You can see that right there. And you see these things like rocks and stuff, they're gonna give you ferrite dust. You can scan these as well. And sometimes they might give you a secondary element when you blow them up. But if you mine those, they're gonna give you ferrite dust. Ferrite dust, you're gonna to need to actually build a base, but in creative mode, you don't. Now you can just swap it back to creative mode whenever you like. So technically, you know, if you want to build more to your base, just put it back into creative mode. You can see there, it's got a um, ship marker for where my ship is. It's got a base marker for where my base is. And I can just follow those to get back again. If you jump in your ship, you're going to see the hazard protection bar go up. Now, when I'm running, you can see my life support has then got two little arrows next to it. If I use my jetpack, which is X, you can see it's got three little arrows next to it. So whatever you do is going to put strain on your life support systems. So if you just walk, you get one arrow. If you run, you get two arrows. If you use jetpack, three arrows. So if you want to top up that bar, that is on your quick menu. And you're going into there. That's your life support. And you're going to be using oxygen for that. So that's the little red plant that I picked up or the hazard plants that you blow up and you get oxygen. The top bar there, um, the hazard protection one, again, if you go into the quick menu, you can just hit there and you can put the sodium plant in, the orange one. And it's going to top your bar up. Or if you buy your ship, just jump in inside of your ship, your hazard protection bar is going to go back up on its own. There you go, boom, it's just restored itself. Not that I had much to actually restore. But there we are, that's pretty much the basics of No Man's Sky and how to actually remove yourself from the tutorial step of having to find your ship, fix your ship, all the survival steps. What you have here now is you've got yourself a nice little base to do all the different story missions that are going to be opened up to you. And to start the story missions, if you go into your menu here and go over to Log, under Log, you can pick up whichever one you want to do. So you can go to Exploration Guide, and um, that's going to start, you know, filling out, oh no, Space Anomaly. That's the one you want to do. Hit up Space Anomaly at the top here, or expand in the base. They're the two that you want to be doing. And that's just going to bring you into the story mode. And it's going to pick on up with the tutorial as if you've actually just repaired your ship and you haven't left your planet. So make sure you select the Space Anomaly, and hopefully it's going to move you on and start doing stuff. 
or you can do staff and expand your base whichever you want to do if you want to do this one you want to be going up to the station inside of the space station and picking up your first overseer coming back to this base in fact I'll show you how to do that one so let's pick this one up let's do that one first there we are I'm gonna leg it over here we're gonna get into my ship where's my ship there's my ship and we're gonna fly on up to the space station now we're in normal mode now and I don't know where I got need launch. I don't know where my launch thrusters are fueled I think they are but we're just gonna fly on up to the space station heck yes boom and let's go let's go let's go wow so yeah, I strongly suggest that you build out a base similar to sort of what I did there with all those sort of tech desks. I mean, it doesn't have to be an exact replica of my base. And as you know, I didn't put all the plants in. Now, what I'm looking for is on that little radial map down there, you see that orange diamond? That's where the actual station is. Now, it's not actually showing the station right now inside of the sky. I don't believe. Uh, OK, here we go. Potential overseer recruit. So let's head over that way. Let's see where it's taking me. Bam! It should take me to the space station, or it might take me to another place on the actual planet. And I think it's taking me to the space station. Lovely jubbly. It was actually hidden behind the back end of that planet. Now, when you go into the space station for the first time, it's going to play you some epic freaking music. Okay, so let's, let's fly on in. You can see there are a load of asteroids over there. If you shoot those, you're going to get yourself silver and gold and all sorts of other sorts of resources that you can sell. But not only that, you're going to get fuel for your ship. Tritium is where you, you get tritium from shooting asteroids, people in the asteroid belts. So make sure you do that and get yourself a load of fuel. Anyway, I've landed inside of the space station, and it, it's a case of going up and recruiting your first overseer. So it's even put a marker where the overseer is. So it's over this way. Oh, and something else that I would strongly suggest you do is on inside of your exosuit, go to a free slot and craft yourself a uh, dun 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 dun, an Atlas Pass Level 3 if it's in there. I don't think it is in there, actually. OK, well, fine. Don't do that, then. <laughs> but you will get the blueprint for that later on inside of play. And that lets you open all doors. Anyhow, we'll head on into here. Boom. And here's a little overseer chap. We're going to go and recruit him. And that's step one of um, doing that sort of mission. Lovely jobby. Hello there, mate. Yes, I would like to recruit thee. Chicka boom. Hiya. Done, diddly done. So he's going to be in that first room at the first station. And you can do all of these sort of missions first, if you like, people. Go and recruit yourself a shed load of little chappies. Nice. And head out this way. Cordio. Now, your ship, hopefully, has got yourself a um, warp drive in there. But if you ever find that you haven't got... Yeah, you've got a little warp drive in there. But if you find that you haven't got what you need or whatever, you can just go into your options from this menu and you can turn it back into creative mode whenever you wish. Okay? And, uh, yeah, get yourself whatever you need and then move on with the actual game. If you don't want to go through the whole grind and you want to catch up with your mates that have probably been playing for years, I mean, I'd say this is the best way to catch up with me. Now, the best way to get back to your base super quick without using any fuel or resources is just to use this teleporter here. So if you hit up this teleporter inside of the station, you're going to have your base that you just made. Just hit it and hit walk back to base. That's going to take you back to your base, people. So it's... It's... <sighs> I think this is a good way for players that have already played No Man's Sky for jumping back in and uh, just getting back the, their bearings and getting caught up because finding your ship, fixing your ship and all that sort of stuff, as, as fun as it is, it's, it's not really the same as the rest of the game. The rest of the game is very relaxed and sort of laid back, whereas this is a, the actual start is a little bit, oh my days, what am I doing? But if you go over here, you've got yourself this little chappy here now, and you can talk to him, and he's going to give you your very first mission. And then you just follow the guide from there on, and it's pretty darn freaking simple. Anyway, I need to show you what I mean. So I'm back at my base, and I'm back at that terminal. There's the little chappy here. Hello, little chappy. And yeah, I now need to go and get glass for him. So there you go. Pretty darn freaking simple. Oh, he's giving me the glass, and he wants me to get frost crystal. Well, as you know, I've planted a load of frost crystal upstairs, so I can just go and pick that frost crystal after it's actually grown and give it to him. But it's going to take a little while before it's uh, ready to grow. But there you are, done. Done, dilly, done. And there we are, people. It's, it's as simple as that. Anyway, so that's that sort of mission. If you want to do the Artemis quest line and a proper little story, that's the opposite one. That's the uh, Space Anomaly. And going on the Space Anomaly is great fun. And that's when sort of multiplayer opens up and all that sort of shenanigans as well. So there we are, peeps. That's 
that's pretty much everything I've got for you on how to get started nice and quick inside of No Man's Sky. And uh, yeah, just remember to jump in your ship, out of your ship before turning off. That's going to create a nice little save for you. And that's pretty much it. That's that's pretty much everything. It's it's that simple. That's my quick start guide for No Man's Sky. Now, after you've done about three or four warp jumps, you are going to encounter a capital ship, a giant freighter. Normally, the first one that you encounter is pretty naff. If you turn it down and carry on jumping, eventually you're going to get offered a second one, which will be much better. But it's up to you which one you want to accept. I mean, I accepted the first one because I quite liked it. It had a nice little animation on it when I was playing through the first time. So it's completely up to you. But there you go, people. That's that's pretty much my quick start guide for No Man's Sky in 2023. And yeah, it's it's kind of a little bit cheaty in a roundabout way. Or some people might say that it is. It negates a massive grind. But I would say play how you want to play. Now, Hello Games have implemented that ability to swap swap your game mode on the fly whenever you want. So play as you want, because that's that's what they've given us. That's the latest update, and that's the, that's the way people can play now, if you want to play that way. But if I was to be playing No Man's Sky in 2023, that's what I would do. Because I, the whole sort of finding your ship, fixing your ship... It's a pain getting all of the base parts if you just want to build bases to do that if you're going to do it the legit way you're going to be there digging up a planet for freaking hours trust me it's it's insane the amount that you have to dig up and even if you did flick it into creative mode you've got to go in and out of menus in and out of menus in and out of menus and select stuff and then it comes up in the top corner go pshum, 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 with all your base parts and even that takes freaking hours and it's like watching paint dry just unlocking all the base parts because there's so many base parts now people it's freaking ridiculous and um, also getting those portal glyphs so you can portal around all over the verse now that you've got those portal glyphs inside of the game let me just jump back over there people there we go let's go into here go into the old menu so if we go into the menu go into catalog into here so the portal glyphs these things you put those into giant portals now if you want to watch a guide on how to find giant portals i put a video in the top corner up there people hit that and that will show you how to find portals then you can go on facebook you can go on reddit you can go on the coordinate exchange or the interstellar index and you can find portal codes for any ship you want in the game any pet you want in the game or any awesome planet that you want to visit in the game hit on up those portal codes jump on over and go and explore it grab what you want and you know win a win a chicken dinner and i've shown you how you can just swap your mode into creative mode whenever you wish so yeah, if you, if you do come across a ship that you can't afford, chuck it in creative mode, buy the ship, Bob's your uncle, fan is your aunt, all that sort of shenanigans, if you want. You know, you don't have to, you could just try and earn yourself a shed load of units. I mean, I've got a freaking farm going right now. You've got all these plants up in these biodomes that are growing. Well, I've only put them in a couple of domes because I didn't do all of them. But in, a, in time, all these plants will grow. I can harvest those, I can use them either in recipes to make something worth a little bit more, or I can make food, food items out of these and I can make myself a load of nanites using Kronos inside of the Nexus or the Spatial Anomaly, whatever you want to call it, which you're going to get to if you're hitting up that other mission and going to the Anomaly. So yeah, there's, there's loads to do. But anyway, I've got guides for pretty much everything on my channel. So if you do get stuck at any point, just type in Captain Steve followed by whatever it is that you want to find for No Man's Sky. So if you put in, you know, turning poo into nanites, Captain Steve, no Man's Sky. It's going to come up with an awesome video on how you can get poo from creatures. Yeah, you feed creatures, they poo, you pick up their poo, and you can turn their poo into something that you can craft into nanites. I know, I've got a video for that. I've got a video for pretty much everything in No Man's Sky because I've been doing this for such a long time. So if you haven't already hit like and subscribe, please do. And if you've got any questions, you can hit me up in the uh, comments. If you've usually put a question mark in your comment, I would normally see it because I usually filter filter via question marks and I try to answer as many as I can each day. So yeah, and um, yeah, hopefully see you in the verse, people. Hopefully you like No Man's Sky, and I hope this has given you a decent way into the game that doesn't feel too overwhelming. Because that's the whole purpose of me putting this together. When you first pick up No Man's Sky, it's such a big game, it's such a big universe, and there's so much to do, and you're thinking, well, how can I get the awesome ships? How can I get awesome planets? How can I find awesome pets? 
Well, now you've got those portal glyphs. You've got an awesome base to start off with. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very basic, simple base in layout, but what it does for you as a new player is freaking amazing. So hopefully this is going to give you the best start in No Man's Sky in 2023, and that should help you catch up with the rest of the player base, and at least let make you feel like you know what you're doing from the word go. All right, people. Anyway, take care. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.